Hello friends and welcome to our changing views. Well as you can see we're still going uh, and we're picking up speed, we're starting to enjoy it. We're slowly trying to update our filming methods and get used to it and some of the ins and outs of the filming and editing. One of the things uh, I did get a, a little bit of advice from David from Cruising the Cut, thank you. And he did mention that the one thing you should try and do is do good sound which we had done before. Uh, we updated the uh, microphone on the camera we use Canon camera as you know and uh, but he did mention a uh, um, a microphone we should be using and it was too expensive for us uh, but the following week we walked into the chat we were looking at a charity shop and we found that the microphone at a quarter of the cost in the charity shop we snapped it up and when we opened it or went to open it, it was realized it was brand new still sealed so that was a bit of a, a plus for us uh, we are building, gaining, gaining momentum, but a lot of you will have noticed one thing, we have a major handicap and we, both Kelly and I have the same handicap and that is we don't own an airboat. We're in Florida, USA, planning to go back to England and we're in the planning and, and, and thinking stage, we've done a lot of thinking with you and we've done that online so that you can all, this, you can hear uh, the thought patterns and so this will raise questions for you I wish some people would put some comments down below It'd be nice to hear from people and what they thought of the channel and what they thought of our efforts uh, but so far I understand if you're looking for an airboat vlog we don't have an airboat yet uh, but to this week gets interesting we're going to build a model and uh, I've got my ruler ready uh, but the, I'm here to tell you that the, the hardest part of this has been finding the dimensions. Uh, now you all know that the dimensions of an airboat start probably about 18 foot. You can get an 18 foot airboat uh, and go up to 70 foot. Now there is a list on the Canal World website that shows you each canal and the dimensions of that canal, i.e. the width it can take, whether it can take a wide beam or, in, or a airboat. And, but also the length. Now you think the length doesn't matter, but it does because the lock has a length. They built that lock to take a length of a boat. Now on a lot of canals, the locks are 70 foot because the old boats and the, the, the dunnies were 70 foot long. But some of the narrow boats, some of the canals weren't built to carry such big, big loads or big, big uh, items and to save water and to save uh, building efforts they built the, the lock smaller so you will see if you go on to that site that some of the locks are not 70 foot now you can go in diagonally so if you think you won't go can't fit in that way you can fit in that way corner to corner uh, i've seen uh one of our favorites we watch is the narrowboat chef and uh, they went up i think it was a rochdale canal a few weeks ago and they did go corner to corner in a few of the locks they had to take the the, the uh, the button fenders off the front and the back and they went corner to corner. They were expecting to have to turn around but they managed to get all the way through and I think the boat is 60 foot. So uh, the dimensions of your boat, the length is up to you. We're going to go for the 57 foot which seems to be popular. Gives us everything we need and we hope it does and uh, but we don't want it too. We don't don't want it too long. We'll give you a, we'll give you a demonstration after of what 57 foot looks like from from uh, from from the from the back. You, you're going to be surprised what it looks like. Uh, but we're building a model, and we needed the, the dimensions. So we went online, and we looked for the dimensions. We need the, the dimension from the from the from the uh, base plate or the not the floor because the floor. Is is normally raised off the base plate to allow for ballast under the floor. I've heard of some of the, the newer boats that are using a very heavy gauge base plate gives it a lot of weight so it doesn't need the ballast. Uh, but you're going to be putting ballast under the floor. This is to keep the, the take the, the barge or the narrow boat uh, down into the water and make it more stable or else you jump on the gunnel and the whole thing would rock like crazy. It needs, it needs weight underneath. Uh, Ross would be top heavy. So uh, we need to know that the, the height from the, the base plate to the gunnel 
so we can build the bottom of the gunnel and the sides for our model and we also need to know how much was under the floor I think I found that now so this is the this is what we're going to base it on we're going to base it on a six foot ten inch wide narrowboat that is the standard measurement for a canal the canals are seven foot wide or seven foot something wide and you, some people will push it up to seven foot they'll take their narrowboat to seven foot well, a lot of these canal walls on uh, the um, narrow on the locks if they're a double lock you're fine if they're a single lock they were built to seven foot something plus that was a hundred years ago some of them are, 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 are pushing in a bit so the, the walls are, are, are bulging this means you can't get through if you got exact to the dimensions so the, the, the general rule of thumb is seven uh, seven foot six I could, I could just confuse myself there. I don't know. We'll come back to that. Give me a second. Be right back. <laughs> right, I'm back. Six foot ten is your width. Sorry I confused myself with all those numbers then. Uh, it must be getting old. I think there's an odd grey just about here. But I'm not, I'm, I might, might have coloured it in by then. Uh, six foot ten wide. So we're going with six foot ten, which is the, the uh, standard. Uh, or the uh, recognized standard so six foot ten wide and 57 foot long we are going from the floor to the gunnels at three foot six that's three foot six from the floor to the gunnels six is six inches under the floor so that's going to be three foot from the f from the floor you walk on to the gunnels we're going to cut now and we're going to start building this boat and uh at the end of here we're going to have a word about the uh, money for our narrowboat so if you want to stick around for that uh, we would appreciate it and if not see you around uh, but please leave some comments below we hope we're going to build building an audience now we hope people still start to see the benefits of this channel and what we plan to do so please 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 like and subscribe we're up to nine subscribers yay nine subscribers like and subscribe there's a lot more to come you're going to see some wonderful stuff here if you're a boat builder out there and you're interested in a a, a, a partnership on building a boat uh, i know that uh, done in the right way it can get you a lot of publicity and a lot of work drop me a line and uh, we're also looking for a, uh, someone that makes um gearboxes for boats i have a rather novel idea and I need to tie up with some people that make gearboxes for boats. If you do that, please also drop me a line. We're going to cut now and we're going to go and come back with our model and show you well, the model. It doesn't exist yet. We're going to start it. See you in a minute. Right, so for the narrowboat build, we've already discussed the dimensions. Uh, we did decide, uh, we, we, I'm going to make it here in, our, in our, the store of our shop. And the reason for that is because we're doing uh, one inch to one foot and it's a 57 foot narrowboat I actually need a 57 inch um, space from from this wall to this this uh, monitor is actually 57 inches and it's flat it's the only size I've got in the room or in, in the building that's 57 inches long and flat and the narrowboat hull is flat so this is where we're going to build it Ah, now, uh, my apologies, as you can see, and I'll do a, a picture in picture here, we're building on a glass worktop, uh, that will become evident in a minute why, uh, this is a, an actual plus for the build, uh, but doesn't do very well for aesthetics when you're looking at it, but I think you, you'll be fine, I'm looking at the camera monitor there, and you, you'll, you'll be fine with that. Uh, we decided, we went through uh, different options of building it in basswood. Now, if you don't know what basswood is, it's very much like balsa wood, but it's almost a, a, a compromise between balsa wood, which is a sheet model making wood, but very, very, very soft, and hardwood. It's like a, a mini hardwood. It's got the the. It's very light, but it's also much stronger than balsa wood, which you can easily break or crush. Uh, but we're trying to save money for an arable, so I don't want to keep paying out and paying out and paying out and paying out because we are not doing very well with money wise and we need to build on that and so we had a quick think on this and 
we did some research and we found that a lot of people do, are making dolls houses from cardboard. Now the, the similarity between the doll's house and this narrowboard uh, model is they both one to one twelve, uh, one inch to a foot, so one to one twelve, one to twelve I think they call it. Uh, but we are, so we looked at this and thought this would be a great idea and we were going to buy sheets of cardboard. While it's on doing this I suddenly realised that we had bought or we had res uh, rescued from the skip or dumpster, as you, whichever country you're in, lots of these boxes a long time ago and they've been here ever since. We've uh, had them in bundles and we've had a few bugs crawl out of them but we've killed them and uh, we used them for our online business but this particular size which is 6x6x6 six by six by six, didn't do very well because it's an odd size. But we, when looking to make this model, we've suddenly realised that the panels in this are gr going to be great for making this, this hull, if we can stick them together. So we bought ourselves a glue gun, let me get rid of this, and uh, we bought ourselves a glue gun. We bought ourselves a full size one, you can buy uh, model, uh, smaller ones, but this is a full size one. And it uh, gives us a good constant flow of hot glue. Now I did make a, a little test model, but my wife Kelly was playing with it and she lost it. So <laughs> I can't show you that. But what I can say is put the, putting the cardboard end to end we didn't think would work. But on, on practice, because it's corrugated, it actually sticks it together extremely strongly. I mean, we couldn't actually pull it apart. We just couldn't pull it apart. I mean, I, I suppose I could have done it if I had put enough force on it but we just couldn't play apart so we're going to start this model build by cutting out the the, the, the uh, panels in cardboard and then we're going to glue them together now i'm thinking six inches so 6 12 18 24 24 2 24 is 48 48 54 60 so we're going to need six do that again six twelve eighteen <laughs> can't do this while you're watching look away uh, 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, so 10. We're going to need 10 panels for one side, 10 panels for the other side, and 10 by panels for the base. Now we're going to cheat at the moment because we're not going to do the uh, bow decks or the bow of the boat because I've not decided on how to do it and the dimensions we're going to do it in. And we're not going to do the actual stern of the boat because that's going to be take a bit more doing. We're going to build the cr the actual hull. Now, if you think cross section, you've got a U shape. Do, do, do. We're going to build that to scale, and then we're going to take a example from the big uh, luxury cruisers. As if you if you've seen how they make these cruise ships, they make them in sections and they just slot in. So we're going to make this this hull, and then we're going to make sections that will fit perfectly in this hull, and it's going to be kitchen or galley, saloon or living room, bedroom, toilet or heads, whatever you want to call it. And we're going to make these all to scale and they'll fit in and take up the width. What this will enable us to do is then move them around to see the, 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 the best uh, layout we want. And once we get this done and we get everything done, we, we're going to make the furniture 1 12th like doll's house scale so we can put everything in and make sure that everything fits. Now, if you've ever owned an RV or a, a motor home or anything like that, you know it's got to be, it's got to be um, balanced. You've got your center of your, your axle, you've got a, a flat sheet across the top of it, and it's got to be balanced. It's got to be balanced left to right, it's got to be balanced front to back. On a narrow boat, there is a balance aspect of it because if ever you've seen a narrow boat that's running with its barrel em tanks empty of water, you'll find water, sorry my sister, water, you'll find that the narrow boat actually sails along like that. If you've ever seen a narrow boat with its head up, it probably means it's got a lot of diesel in the back, everyone stood on the back, there's no, there's no weight in the front. Yet once the water tanks are full, you'll probably find it sits more or less right. I suppose it could even go down too far if they've not balanced the boat in some sense. But in a normal sense, when you've got half a tank of water, water 
I'm going to build it on half a tank of water, half a tank of diesel. We want that narrow bolt to sit about right so that when it's got more diesel in it, it can do that. It's got more water in it, it can do that. You want to take an averages. Uh, other than that, the, the internal weights are not going to be a great big of a problem after all. I mean, why is this narrow bolt? It's, it's a lot of tons. So it's not, not a, a weight ratio as in a caravan where you can only tow so much. So uh, we've got a uh, hot glue gun, cardboard, ruler. I'm going to try and keep everything straight. I got my trusty snap off blade. I got my new knife. I don't know what I'm going to use that for. And I brought this down to snap some blades off. So we're going to get started and we're going to take this in sections and uh, stick around. <laughs> I think it's going to be a laugh. We'll try, try and come back. See you soon. So right, here we are and uh, we've got our cardboard. And as you can see, uh, like I said before, it's a, I think it's about six inches. It should be six, yeah, six, six inches from there to there. Now I'm talking from there to there. So probably better if I do that, you can see an actual thing now. Um, this is a section we're going to use for the model book making. It's just over six inches and six inches high. What this is going to give us is each box should give us one, two, three, four panels. And we won't use that one because it's a bit scabby. Uh, but we need to cut these off straight and try and get as many of these panels as we can. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to separate this box off and make it into a sheet. So, oh, nearly cut one of the panels. I did cut one of the panels, can't believe that. Right, <laughs> first mistake. <laughs> nice straight edge, yeah? Yeah, can you see that straight edge? Let me show you how straight that edge is. Wow, have you ever seen a straight edge like that? You can stick around, this is going to be absolutely top-notch stuff. Uh, <laughs> So, we've got our panel, uh, you can see it here now, and uh, we're going to uh, do some cutting and uh, we'll be right back to you as soon as we can. Bye. So, uh, first thing we need, like I said, we need um, 10 of these panels cut off full width, a uh, full length, shallower width. You need 10 of those per side, 10 for the bottom and 10 for the top. Now the bottom is six foot six, so uh, I'm not sure we're gonna get that on there because if you think six foot six is six and a half foot, you're gonna need six and a half foot of that. So are any of these six and a half, let's have a look. No, they're all six. Um, that might give us a bit of a problem. What we might have to do with that is cut down the middle and then do something with it because it'll be under the boat anyway. Under the boat. Uh, so, first thing we need to do is cut these off straight. Uh, I'm just going to cut them from the... Oh, that's... How annoying is that? My, my ruler is not long enough. But then again, we'll need the centre. So I'm just going to line that up like that. And I'm just going to go straight down. Like that. There you go. Uh, I'm not going to keep you around for that because that's going to be pretty boring. And uh, hopefully that's going to be straight, which it is. Now once once we get it straight to that, we can put that on there. Like that. Run that down there. Do the same on the other side. Like that. And I'm not too worried about scratching this counter top up. It's a very old counter. And uh, I don't, don't think that's going to worry it. And then we're going to cut it off at 3 foot 6. So, uh, yeah, three foot six, so it's three and a half. So it's three and a half inches. So we're going to cut it off there. And there. 
All these pens I've got here and none of them work. Let's try that again. There. That won't work. More or less. And there. Now I'm not anal with this. Uh, somebody once told me long ago, don't let perfection get in the way of the job. And uh, they were very, very true on that. So, there we go. We're going to put that there like that. And hopefully, I'm just trying to keep it square because the squareness on the edges of joining is going to be more important than anything. Uh, although I've gone off the top with that, so I'm just going to cut that again. And uh, there is our first panel for our narrowbow. So, uh, imagine 10 of them in a row and then we're going to glue them together. I'm not going to keep you around while I cut out 10 of these because it's going to be as tedious for you watching as it is for me cutting them. So uh, I'm going to cut out here and see you in a few minutes when we've got a lot of them made. Right, so I've cut some of the uh, panels out and uh, that's our actual working height for the, pa for the side panels. What I've decided to do with the base because oops, sorry, the width of a panel is not going to be sufficient for the width because we need six and a half inches and they're all under, uh, well if I cut that way, I don't know, six and a half actually, I could just cut them a bit uh, on the long side. Uh, anyway, we've decided, I've decided to do them this way. We're going to do them this way and then we'll cut across the edges and cut them off to a little bit wider. That will give us a width and that will give us, uh, what's that going to give us? We're going to need 6, 12, 18, 24, 24, yeah, we're still going to need uh, 6 of these, uh, 10 of these in length. So 10 of these in length, 20 of these and you start to see the hole coming together, I hope is what it's going to look like and uh, then we will do something about the sides and the bottom to strengthen it but that's our basic hull so uh, let's speed this up and we'll sh do some cutting Right, so we'll come back to you now, uh, we've cut some of these off, uh, I'm, I may or may not show you that in process because I forgot to turn the light on, uh, but we have cut these off now, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, and I've had to cut some of them off to, to actual size, here's two of them, and I've tried to keep those edges as straight as I possibly can because we want a good nice buff joint on them. Uh, but it is proving to be a little bit difficult on, on the uh, circumstances. Uh, but we are literally, what we're doing is giving one straight edge, we don't need two because we're cutting this edge off. I'm using this to put it up against the side, put this on the side and then we do a nice, hopefully straight cut, but what I find is it's pulling the, the uh, cardboard away from me. So I've changed it around and I'm doing this side like this. Um, like this but even then I felt like moose so perhaps we just eye it a little bit so looking for the eye push down and cut there's one end off the other end off keeping to that straight edge we produced earlier and we're going to cut this end off. There's that one off. And then we need cutting to 6-6. Six, six. We're going to make one of these as a template. The one with the hole is going to be the template. So we're going to put that on there. And see something's wrong. Oh, we were a bit longer on this one. We're going to put that on there. And we're going to take our pencil. To make sure we buff up with both of them. And we're going to give a nice straight edge. There's our straight edge. 
and we're going to cut that straight edge. We can use the, uh, the angle to make sure it's right, which it looks right, and we're going to go like this. So there's another one done, uh, we're up to three. I'm already getting confused, I don't know where my, my straight edge is. Right, there's my straight edge. <laughs> we'll put template on that in a minute. A nice big T on it. There. So we're up to three and uh, we're going to have to trim them off to length because they're a little bit uh, different on length. But length's not important at the moment. We're up to three. We only need another 20. Wish me luck, this is going to be boring. I'm not going to even time lapse this because it will just go on forever. Uh, hopefully it will come back in a minute. Or, yeah, we'll come back in a minute. We'll, we'll stick some them together, show you that bit, and then we'll, we'll cut away again. So, just bear with us. We're going to turn the glue, glue gun on. Right, so while we're waiting for the heat gun to fully warm up, uh, which is getting there now, I was getting a bit tired of chasing the, the cardboard while I was cutting it. So what I've done now is I've put a piece of wood, I've taken a piece of wood which I've checked the straight edge on, and I've fastened it to the edge of the counter with this clamp so I can actually pull, pull against it. Now I can't over tighten it of course because uh, it's a wooden glass top and I don't want to shatter the top. Let me just see if we can get that back on there, it was on there a minute ago. It's funny how sometimes you get something on and a few seconds later it won't go back on again. But there you go. So this is a uh, this is a straight edge. Works on two two ideas now because now we can cut off straight, knowing that we're up against the edge. That will make things a lot better, and we don't have to hold down the uh, thing so much. There you go. Bit of ingenuity, in ingenuity as we're going along, and uh, quick swap over. To the, oh, we can't see it on the other side, can we? That's not good. Uh, hmm, good one isn't it? There's a pond for you. How do we cut the other side? Well I'm only cutting the edge off so it doesn't really matter. I I can eyeball it. Uh, which is about there. And uh, there's your panel. Now we're going to do the uh, base of the bolt first. I've measured these up and these are uh, six and a half inches from point. Yep. So so six and a half inches from the end. Just I always move it in a couple of inches because I don't I trust the rule as one. Well. Yeah. So we're six and a half. Now these are the width of the bolt, so that's equivalent to six foot six inch wide narrow bolt. And we're going to take the, the panels and we're going to fasten them this way. Now I can use this to push them up against and keep them straight. I've taken three of the panels and I've laid them together to make sure that we get a nice flush fit. Uh, like for example this one gives us a bit of a dimp, dimp, a uh, bit of a dent, dimp, dimp, a little dent. And uh, this one would go like that. Of course that's my template so I don't want to use that but we can at least put two together. And uh, what I've done is because it's uh, corrugated cardboard I've just taken the edge of the ruler and I've run it down the edge just to, to push the edge in a little bit. Give the glue somewhere to cut into. Like that. So now, let's try our first one. So, now the idea of doing it on the glass is that once we put it on there, we can push it against the glass and know that it's flat and level. Um, I'm hoping it is. This, this glass counter is quite long so it could have a bit of a bow in it, but it shouldn't be too bad. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a scale model, but it's not a, a, a perfect scale model. Or it's as perfect as we can get it. So here we go, first one. Oh, shoot. <laughs> now, if you want to have some fun with a, watching someone with one of these, go to my sister's website, the Lancashire Lass. I'll leave a link below. And uh, she makes some, she, I said she makes some beautiful home decor things. But she is dangerous with one of these things. I'm sure she scolded herself before. And I'm sure I'm about to scold myself any minute. I don't know if I've got these on the right temperature or not, but wow, it's hard to get it out. Let's try that, shall we? Let's see what we can do. Oh no, it's just me. Sorry, right, try again. Right, so which two edges are we gonna to put together? We're gonna to put these two together. 
So, with this one, without any further to do, here we go. Wow, this isn't fidgety. Like that. Hot glue on there. Oh. Don't put it on the counter until you put it together. Put it together. Now I've lost my nice smooth edge. <laughs> well, we said it would be fun, didn't we? And there is your nice smooth edge. Now, it was supposed to push up against this board, but of course, I got all glue on the tabletop. So let's see if we can quickly remove that while this is still hot or warmish and see how we did on the actual. There you go. It's nice and straight on the edge. It's pushed together there. Just take off any excess with your finger at the top. Don't any lumps. It doesn't matter on the bottom. But uh, there's your first panel. And you can see that's very stable. I mean, it's not even set yet, but that is quite stable. Uh, now, afterwards, we're going to do a, a, a tape over it. And on the outside, we're going to use a black, black duct tape or duct tape black duct tape and what that will do is um, resemble the blacking of the boat so I'm not going to use that one because that's my template uh, but we're going to go on from there and uh, I don't know how far we're going to get with this vlog but uh, this is what we're going to do and uh, maybe maybe we'll uh, just do this for a few minutes and then we'll cut out and then come back and see how it's gone right thanks a lot and uh, we'll see you soon so right if you saw me stick these pieces together earlier, uh, I will be have escaped me now. This is it. Uh, as you can see, that is quite a good, strong join, and this is going to make a good model. However, I made a slight mistake because what I've stuck together here are the side panels, and they're supposed to be stuck together that way. Uh, these are not quite wide enough for the floor panels, I don't think. Well, well, no, they are wide enough, but we're not using the full width because we're cutting them off at three and a half inches. So uh, what I've done is I've taken another one of these and I've marked it up for the floor panels uh, because we're going to be cutting them off in width. So all we need to make sure is that we've got the, uh, the width that we want. So to standardize it, I've just done one as a template and I'm just going to mark each one across for the width. Uh, which I could have just done that without t moving anything if I'd have been any smarter so let's just make sure that's right so one there one there there's our, our widths for our floors so this should speed up the floor a little bit we'll mark these up we'll cut them up nice and quickly and uh, and we'll be back to you and we'll glue these together and show you the floor Right, well as you can see we've progressed along a bit, we've got uh, most of the floor met laid cut out now and uh, we've had a couple of aha moments, uh, as I said we're not going to do the bar and the stern straight off so we're doing, we're concentrating at the moment on the cabin and the cabin is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine long is the cabin, uh, but while making it we've, like I said we've had a couple of aha moments because this uh, the idea was we cut these off at the right length and then put these on to make the, the, the hole. Well, as some of you probably guessed, this isn't far off the width. It's just under six and a half. I mean, six and a half is like here. And if you can see the creases are out there. So if we fold that up for you to show you now, uh, it's about six and a quarter. Well, we need six and a half. So I did wonder whether to cheat. <laughs> I 
<laughs> I did actually wonder where to cheat. But uh, we're going to make, like I said, a room dioramas. Uh, probably about two of these long will be a room. Like the kitchen will be built into there. And then we're going to drop it in the hole and move it around to see where we want it. So, uh, they can't both be the same width because they won't fit into each other. So what I've worked out is, if we put these on here, and then put this side up here, and glue it, then when we're ready to drop it in, we'll have the right width for the drop-in sections. And this will actually then measure 6'6". Six, six. Uh, so what I've done here, I've glued one of the boxes together to give me that height and then we're going to just glue that on there. Glue one on each end, remove that, you're going to have a nice straight hole and like I said the room sections then once made up will just drop in. Uh, so I'm not going to bore you with me trying to glue all this together at the moment uh, because it is going to be a, 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 a bit of a tedious thing because we're going to drop bits into it so we need it to be more or less straight and these sections these boxes are not very well constructed there is a long side and a short side uh, so there the two joints do up but if I do this you'll see that the two joints do not uh, there's a definite variation on them so we're going to straighten all this up make everything right we will glue all these together and this will be the basis of the hull. We will then put the sides on and uh, start making that hull and we'll even make the room, the drop-ins for the rooms. I know the dimensions of each room that we want to do. So we're going to do that and we're going to come back to you next week. So this is it for now. I'll tell you what, let's put one together so you can at least see what, what it's going to look like. So. Last time I did push the ends in a bit, but I think these are more or less pushed in all right, so I don't think that's going to be too big of a problem. Although I wish I'd have remembered to do it, I've got to be honest. Uh, but it's corrugated part cardboard, so it does have a, an open end on it, when it's like this. Then we're going to very carefully try and get it together, and then while it's there, we're going to push it up against there and there is your floor that is a floor section of the barge and that is equivalent to 10 foot of barge so two of them make 10 foot five of them together and uh, we've got 50 foot like i said we don't quite need 50 foot because we've got the stem area which we're trying to go through all the different options with and we've got the front so this is all we need, uh, that's how it's going to happen and you can see it's quite okay and it's all together and that's how we're going to make the barge. So I hope you found that interesting so far, uh, I've got to be honest, having thought of doing this and uh, went to do it, I was going to start it over the weekend but I couldn't get, I, I couldn't even imagine it, I thought it was going to be really crappy you know, we'll watch it. But I'm quite, I'm quite happy the way it's coming out. I think it's going to be an absolutely wonderful scale model. Uh, once we get the hull and everything together, we can start making the rooms. And uh, if you're into doll's houses, it, it may give you a, a little bit of a, a thing on how to make a doll's house. If you're into narrowboats and you want to make a narrowboat model of yours, uh, it might give you some ideas on that as well. But I think it's rather good and I'm enjoying it already. Uh, I've not stuck anything together much. I've got glue all over my uh, countertop glue all over me and glue all of the, uh, the tools uh, <laughs> but that was a foregone conclusion that that would happen with a hot glue gun and uh, this is a wonderful hot glue gun they just haven't put a, a little light on to say when it's running and not so that's a bit of an off put so if you do get a, a hot glue gun to make anything with get one of the full size ones uh, this one's a dual temperature the, the sticks are dual temperature so you can have higher or low uh, but have a look if it's got an indicator light on because there's, there's nothing on to say it's on and there's nothing on to say it's reached temperature so that's a, that's the only fault I've got with this glue gun uh, but there you go folks this is the first of many I hope you're getting um, I hope you're finding it interesting I'm finding it interesting doing it for you so I really hope you find it interesting I hope you'll stick around because one day this piece of cardboard that's going to be a, a, a model narrowboat 
is going to be a scale representation of my 57 foot narrow bolt called Mythwitch after my good friend and brother who has now died. But this is going to be it. Uh, we've had a few problems over the years but we uh, we don't like to speak of that and we don't like to speak down and we, we want to keep this upbeat and happy. Uh, but some of our friends who are watching us move back to the UK some of our friends in the UK and some of our friends in America. We've gained many, many good friends over the years. We've been here for uh, 14, 15 years now, and we've gained some great friends, uh, both uh, not just friends and friends from our church. And uh, they've all asked if there's any way they can help us and contribute. So for this reason, uh, we have launched, or we are launching, and I'm gonna put the link here for it, a GoFundMe page for our narrowboats. Uh, now, I'm not going to do a fundraiser on this channel. This was never the purpose of the channel. Uh, it's only come about because people have asked me to do it. But I'm not going to mention it uh, going forward from here. I might mention it every 10 videos or something, or 10 weeks, but I'm not going to... Or 10 weeks. We hope to be in... Back. We hope to get this sorted as quick as possible. But I'm not going to mention this all the time. I will put on a ticker tape across the bottom of the screen uh, updates on how it's doing and uh, just to give you some idea of the money we raised towards our narrow bolt. Uh, I don't know at the moment, I'm thinking, uh, I'm hoping to pull together from our own, from ourselves and from other sources and from business and everything really, uh, $57,000, that's $57,000. At the moment uh, we've got 1000 so 56 to go and uh, we're going to keep positive keep upbeat you've seen my vlog on anxiety so you know i have had a few uh, anxiety problems and uh, we've got a few other things going on but we need to get our lives sorted out we need to give ourselves a life again uh we love america we love the people we love the, the country we love the state of florida but it's uh, not been i don't know if it's not been kind to us or we just didn't get it right i don't know what's happened but anyway time for a change of plan time for some changing views hope you stick around and see them and uh hope to see you again bye now